Well, this is the uh, do or die moment here as you come into the close of Europe. And um, so all the currency pairs are kind of scatterbrained opposing the dollar. And there's no unison moves today. Uh, yesterday, it was obvious that the dollar across these three instruments, uh, Swiss, CAD, Yen, were all kind of, you know, they were, the dollar was crushed equally. Now it's kind of scatterbrained. And um, so it's every man for himself kind of trading right now. Um, just getting in on retests here. So in this situation, you're kind of scalping, I guess, for the most part, almost always. And um, I'm trading on limits and stops. Now this New Zealand, I mean, this Australian earlier came down and stopped these people out. So I got in some stops, and here I got some stops running just because it got quiet. I also bought on limits down there, and then I, and then I rebought the um, retests here, because if you look at the 15, you can see this retest. So depending how active you want to trade these things, look at this euro screaming north, and I expect the pound to play catch up. So. Um, if the euro's overbaked, and I, I wouldn't bring up the euro pound chart, you could, and you could do a bunch of analysis there, but it's really gonna, it's really gonna screw up your mind because it's not that much about um, analysis is about just taking advantage of price movements, and the price moves in your favor, and just get the hell out if you're if you reached your uh, pip target, or you're gonna let it ride. Now, if you're a swing trader, maybe you can hang for four hours or. 40 seconds or whatever that and how many pips how big is your stop so you could just at any moment you could just take off all profits and let the loser run so if i'm up on this pound right now i'm getting out of the pound i'm going to let the new zealand take over so across the board always taking something off the table market's always in fluctuation mode it's not like like if this horse came in this is like seven, uh, when you go to the racetrack, I think they've got like seven uh, heats or races. And if you treat it like that, you know, just treat it like customers coming and going from your uh, unapproved coffee shop, you know. Um, you know, who's going to put a slippery floor into their bathroom on the... Um, you know, this cracks me up about regulation. I was in a restaurant the other day, and I went into the... Uh, bathroom it was a pizza place and these pizza places that are just you know here's your pizza one slice I get the one slice I go back in the bathroom it literally said it had like almost a video on how to wash your hands and clean them before you come back in and 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 mess with people's food I just thought that was hilarious uh, and I said to the guy and he thought it was funny too everybody kind of just isn't funny everybody just kind of giggles about that and then it, but they just people make a living making those signs, you know, so I guess it is creating industry. Socialism is good after all, huh? Um, I had a buddy, my friend was, when we were kids, my friend said that. He said, well, they're jobs. <laughs> yeah, I know. A lot of demand for people uh, telling us how dumb we are. Now, so this grid system, I'm trading because it's just too boring to trade any other style. I'm looking to get filled here if this New Zealand plunges again for the retest. But I've kind of, I've, I've committed to buying this, this uh, so-called so bottom here, temporary bottom. Now I dumped out of the uh, scalps on the British pound here, and letting the Australian possibly retest. I'm very bullish on this because I'm very bearish on CAD. There's an inversion here between CAD and New Zealand, typically, and Australia and New Zealand. So these three in the middle of the screen, to me, is if I'm not going to sell this, which I was pretty, I almost going to put an order at the round handle, but I could see it was quite the amazing run. Now, 25 pip grid sells. You could have a hotkey for that, like what I said. Get another keyboard. Don't mix your buys with your sells on the same keyboard. <laughs> For all you people, all you thousands of people that are now buying a Cherry keyboard and you're now running it, just a warning to you.
So the one hour gives us a four hour. When we see this uh, big battle zone here, we can start thinking about, you know what? I just saw, saw, I was just in a chat room, and this guy that runs a chat room said, never buy a, never trade a sleeping market. I thought that was the strangest thing. I mean, really, it depends how you get in. If you've bracketed that with buy and sell stops, and you literally don't care which way it goes, right? You're just like, you're the girl in the room, and you don't care, right? I guess you're the hooker girl in the room. And whichever, who's ever got money, you're in. Of course, we don't want to think about trading as being like that, but it really is, sadly. Trading is not about any kind of manners. and I mean, it's, it's just amazing, you know, you see people that are traders, and typically they're nice people, and they bring other manners to the market. The market has no manners, and it's really not a good fit uh, to take that skill set. So the market goes, the market's very, and then also time distortion. When you see a market plunging 300 pips in 40 seconds, it can be really offsetting because it seems like time is standing still at least for me when I'm scalping and I look at the clock and I swear it's only been an hour and I'm thinking my god we've been through on a 15 minute chart mind you we've been through 20 trades possible you, you can't jump on every trade you see unless you've got a hot key ready and I still think uh, pending plunge orders is better than trading at the market. So, so far, I have not traded at the market yet today, this this uh, past two days. And I must say, it's a big improvement as far as, well, you need the patience to wait for the market to plunge into your buy bank. But look at this CAD trade. Now, last night, this is my trade here. I was bracketed here. I had buy stops here for the, I, I figured the trap was over, right? So once they trap the um, bears into this cage down here, you just figured, you know, <laughs> some point. And this is only the one-hour chart, so the entries here would have been you're, you're buying with limits here all the way to the round or all the way to the 50-yard line. I fixed the uh, grid there. So this is the 100-yard. This is the, the goal post. This is the 50-yard line. But look at this touchback. And then they run the ball all the way through to the next football field. So if you're thinking in terms of football fields, which I guess I am. And here's the failure to make the targets for the um, the Canadian uh, selling the dollar bears were not making their target. And there was a lot of confusion whether or not this double, well, in other words, there was a jury out about this double bottom should be the top. And it was for that bam now the market gets choppy quiet and this is the time never buy never trade a sleeping market dumb i mean so the stuff people say and anybody that's ever read a trading book a lot of that stuff as far as scalpers were as far as just taking advantage of price fluctuation without a random i would say random we kind of figure it's going to go up and down I don't know if that's random, but I can draw this channel perfectly here and make arguments for this, that, and the other thing. But if I buy, if I sell right here, um, it's all about where's my stop at. Maybe I should buy down here uh, on a limit or just buy at the 50-yard line on a limit because maybe right now, you know, the market's just, there. you know, it's not either way. So you look for the other currency pair. You're running um, seven pairs. Okay, this is setting up for a buy. So I might put a 15-minute buy stop above. If it doesn't fill, then it's going to go crashing into my um, super deep 8-hour orders. So I, 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 I'm going to buy um, about 100 pips deep in 8 hours. So same thing here. Um, and these are way away from current price. This is the only buy I can see on the whole screen right now. A, from a volatility standpoint, a scalp to at least this bottom, last known bottom. So I've just taken the ambiguity out by just saying, give me a one period moving average. Just give me the closing price and give me the range. Uh, yeah, this could be end up being the bottom of a hammer, and you want it, you may hold this trade all the way through till it makes it to uh, this support, but maybe not. So maybe it's just going to trap me because. 
I think it's going to um, go up, and it's really only going to come up into what was previously support, and the sellers are going to come, and they're going to continue going down. But this is the one-hour chart, and if we look in the major landscape here, and we tagged that 50, so you had to get out on the 50-yard line there for at least a uh, 10 5-pip scalp. Now, you can't have those trades in there. You can hand-place all these orders. It's just a matter of the um, each currency pair. You hand-place all your orders um, on here. So your buy limits are still down here for possible retest. Uh, and if these are going to... Uh, self evaporate in eight hours then it doesn't matter now for the next as you get near the close of the day here or this session here there can be a wicked um one of these um i guess you know when the market's quiet too long you're going to get that so here i'm betting a little bit on new zealand coming up canadian coming back to the starting gate and um it's kind of like a follow the money game or follow the um, patterns. You got seven setups, seven things forming. You know, the, the people that are really gun ho on selling this cat right now, they're probably got in for a scalp of at least five pips on this pullback. And the Swiss looks like, um, you know, everything looks rangy now. And uh, I'm looking to buy the euro if it replunges. Because this uh, Swiss does look like it could um, at least pop to this 100. So maybe you put your sell limits right here. So tonight, you might get a nice scalp off of that. That's a double bottom. And uh, I want to buy here if it plunges in the next uh, two hours. So if you if you just make sure you trade super far away from all current prices, so I'll put an eight-hour bank in here. So once a day you come up to the platform and you just have to gauge. Maybe this one you want to buy super deep. Always start off super deep here, and work your way towards um, the current time frame. So it's like two trains coming at each other, you know, like the old um, Adams family. You set up this scenario. And, and this is your trade and um, it doesn't depend on any um, uh, anything other than really looking for the market to move um, in other words instead of getting in a hedge right now a typical grid trading definition would be put on a hedge right now on one currency pair and take off a leg when you get to well instead of that how about you just get in one leg when we get to an extreme if you think that that's the place to that it's going to reverse then you do that trade otherwise you just put in gumpster trades at 50 uh pip handles with 25 pip stops on every currency pair you know every four hours you're dropping the same script you're going to get picked up on something you're going to get filled you're going to make money right the problem with that is is that for intelligent people it's disturbing because it's random. You, you're, you mean to tell me you're just going to... Yeah, that's right. I'm just going to throw an order out there that lasts for 15 minutes that's 30 pips deep because I'm going to trade a 20 pip bounce with a 10 pip stop. And that's it. And if that's your whole trade plan every day, you can launch that order across, you know, every pair out there. Now, there comes a point in time when you've launched too many orders and the count can't sustain getting off the ground I mean, to build the account uh, slow and steady, right? I mean, you want to be a turtle uh, trader in the sense that you're accumulating money. You're not. You're going to make it there. Of course, the turtle traders got run over by a car because when they were crossing the street, the news came out or whatever. You know, that was, that was when the market started to go choppy and they were their uh, ATRs were off or they were getting in too tight on certain things, they got blown up. So not all strategies work, and if you're a pattern trader on seven pairs, um, I guess you could have a sell here on this. Obviously, you could have put a sell up there today on the right at this pivot. You, you'd have a hand place sell on this pivot, right? Uh, this uh, bottom becomes a top, becomes a top. But you know, now it looks we want to get in on buys here, so maybe we're going to get on a scalp, like a scalp here and a scalp there, and. 
You can never go about. You can never lose money. Well, you, it's not you can't lose money, but you 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 want to risk about you know maybe 40 pips for an 80 pip bounce. So maybe you have an order down here that's like I'm gonna get in at this dumbass round handle, like just like this. Look at the euro turn on a dime right at the 100 yard line. Now, isn't it kind of funny that it lines up with this? Now, that's, the euro definitely could make it to the 50 yard line here. Well, who's not selling here in a few minutes, right? And look at this spike into the 25 handle. Now, I could put up a 25 pip grid here. And you just see how dumb this stuff is. Now, the Swiss should be pulling back, and the dollar should be pulling back now. So I'm looking at, I'm long the uh, New Zealand right now, and long the pound and a couple other systems, long Australia. But only for the <clears throat> only for the scalp moment here was the 50 pip scalp off the round. Almost out of that trade, looking for this CAD to pull back now. So I'm putting in monster buy limits here, anticipating a psycho plunge of the dollar. One last um, smash and grab to this uh, fair value zone. Okay, Swiss. Um, I'm just going to buy a scalp because I do think the dollar's had it. Same thing on the yen. <laughs> the yen I'm going to get in super deep. Right, right down here at the bottom. So this is right, <clears throat> right on the edge of um, the market. Typically, is where people are freaking out. Um, the British pound comes flying back into here. Uh, almost, well, we broke a trend line, so I guess a lot of people could have broke traded the breakout on the small. Like, who couldn't see that coming, right? Um, you know, it's the guys that sold at the 50 here, they finally get made their 50. And then some. Uh, getting back in on this trend line is the only next place to get in the pound. Right, the argument is... But for the bears, the argument is, oh yeah, wait till we take out that trend line. So, But a scalp to the 100 here, I'm getting out. If we get there by the uh, in the next hour, is they close, and you'll see these markets do that right in the close. So you make it to the 50 yard line, double top retest. Now New Zealand's coming because that market's going to open up in a little bit. So maybe what people are anticipating, they want to buy New Zealand here, and when New Zealand opens, they're going to dump. Looking for a psycho pullback in the uh, dollar yen for a, a psycho scalp. In other words. They rip it down all the way to here and whoosh. Same thing on dollar cad. So it's going to look for a violent close to the week. This Australian was definitely. Now, New Zealand should typically play catch up to Australia. Um, so if you miss the Australian one hour train, you jump on the New Zealand train right now. And this, we're waiting for the pullback on dollar cad. And um, it looks like it's getting late in the day, so I'm going to put in my scalps right here for the comeback into the top here, this baby top, just before we left the gate. And dollar yen, I'm going to, I'm, I already got pennings in, so I have to put a, a layer in deeper now. Let's see if I got a rock bottom order there. Okay, that's super deep. All the way back to the lows from uh, two weeks ago. And I wish this would fill right now. Like, now you could dial this down to a 15 minute thing and you'd be out of this New Zealand about right now. So, right where I'm getting filled is where the problem's gonna be. Right? People are gonna come in there and they're gonna think that's the place to sell. So, I might have to scalp out of some of this. But I guess that involves waiting for the clock because if we take out this high and it becomes like a baby auction here you know we did ricochet off this painfully obvious double top that that coincides with this top back here so that was a real 
You know, I'm, re I'm, re I'm ready to get out already. You know, I mean, it's, everybody's on to these trades. These are stupid, easy tra I mean, everybody sees it, right? Don't we all see this stuff? And, uh, again, the 50-yard line coming back to this. So, one-hour chart's got plenty of setups. Um, you got to wait about four hours to make money on these charts, though. Maybe 12 hours. Well, I expect that the uh, euro is going to try to nab this 50 just by the time you come to the top of the hour. I'm probably going to have to sit tight on New Zealand. I guess I'll be dumping right when we retest that top, at least on some position, taking something off the table there. Um, this one's already designed to get out, but I'm trying to keep this organized. This one should actually be the other currency pair but at least I know the, these three on the right of the dollar regardless dollars the leading instrument so when you go into your uh, platform you can always say show me by symbol and you can see which uh, symbols making money or you can see which symbols if you wanted to delete all the dollar trades you would just so right now it's pure um, uh, selling the dollar right now New Zealand only and it's gonna just be sitting tight till this thing plays out looking for uh, by the top of the hour okay we're coming right up at where the sellers would typically come in but if they blow them out if we reject that as being the a lot of scalpers are probably gonna be dumping right now obviously So the British pound scalpers will be dumping here. 50 yard line, big deal. I'm about to get out of these uh, trades here just because it does look like sellers are going to come in. But we're just going to wait out, wait this out to the top of the hour. But that's, uh, look at this, look at this uh, 25 yard line entry. So I'm going to do a 25 pip grid video and I'm going to write the um, 50 pip entries and just linear entry. So 75 pip deep and let that order last for say 15 minutes or a half hour. When the market's really on fire, if we're dropping orders like that, we're going to clean up on these trades because you have to know that when you press that button you're risking x dollars you know in other words you, you can't press 40 buttons when there's only enough money in the account for 10 buttons 10 button pushes every 15 minutes but if you're riding along in the market like that and you want to sit at your desk and have something to do that makes sense you have 15 minute and half hour orders this way you're always push, pushing a button there's always a trade. There's always a market that's in a phase. There's always an instrument that's going through its phase. Um, anticipating the crash on a 15-minute chart has a different pip range than anticipating the crash on a four-hour chart. But you really, um, as long as you got your pip handles there, you'll know, hey, you know, this is, like if I went to the uh, five-minute CAD right now it looks like well you know hey let's buy but it could always do the um, complete uh, other thing say the 15 minute chart here a little tough getting off the ground I mean it looks like a plane trying to make it to the end of the runway without crashing but we do have a concise of if you take this wick out which is the whole purpose of running this kind of chart then you can see it's going to be the better entry when I retest this top you can see where your limit needed to be on this chart if that's your crossover where's the place to get in it's always going to be the retest of this top so you have a very tight stop on that and <clears throat> you scalp something out of that or you just had the whole thing, you had to stop down here and let the whole thing go. Just let the whole thing go. Look at that trade. I mean, here, um, 
you have a pending buy limit just because of that. And you get filled there. You get filled there, take a little heat there, make a little there. You just keep re-entering X deep. Um, and it could be a four hour order or it could be a 12 hour order. Or it could be a, of course, once it's filled, you'd have to re-enter. So maybe every 15 minute chart, every hour you keep punching the, hey, I want to buy uh, 25 pips deep. And um, if you come, if the market's really on fire, it's even better because when you come back to the platform, at least that trade will be making sense then. Okay, and then you can just paint, wait for the painful. Okay, we're going to come back in here. Probably going to have to get out of this trade and wait for something else that's that's about to come unraveled in some awful way. But keep in mind the time frame. You're waiting for this to come back today sometime to the starting gate, to the scene of the crime, so to speak. If, if only for the plunge retrace of that little zone. So if we come back 75 pips for a 30 pip bounce, or we come back 100 pips for a 50 pip bounce with a 25 pip stop, that's our entry. And uh, that's the only way I can really get my brain around this this drama. Okay, so we're, we're letting it play out. The top of the hour is coming. Here the sellers are coming in. So here's the big, the big controversy is, is this really going to become where sellers come in, or are they going to blow out this top and do an... A smash to the uh, round and then that's it and the um, here comes the cad if this goes smashing up the cad's gonna go smashing down so we have to get in on the smashes smashing grab trading you know super deep right always super deep and we're almost out of this one waiting to get filled on this uh, plunge here so yeah it's pretty uh it's pretty dumb, but uh, it's the only way I could get my brain around this. Uh, taking it to seven pairs here. <clears throat> Buy only, though, because I don't have another keyboard yet, and I don't really want to... Um, although selling that CAD today at the 75 with just a single drop for a scalp, this had to be the dumbest trade today as far as selling. Um, I guess there was a sell here on the... Um, Another dumb trade here on the uh, Swiss was to put your sell limits here. You never got filled. And this next known low was this one. But you took a little heat on that. They, they definitely, they never made it to the, uh, I guess if you had them on the wick here. Sell limit. Definitely the floor for the uh, the wick entry. That puts another element into it, though. If you're going to trade off the wicks, it's it's a little different, maybe. Of course, that is the floor for the even the people that think in terms of that. Of course, you could stack up a bunch of yellow lines here because of the um, because of that um, big controversy here, and it was always the place to get in for the longs at that round handle to just keep ramping it up 50, 50. And the Canadian dollar can really move hard, so if you love to trade, Canadian dollar is the... If you like a lot of pips, I started out trading Canadian dollar because it just seemed an easy uh, uh, swing trade. Retracement, traders, uh, currency pair, kind of. Same with the Australian. So we got news coming out tonight on these two guys, and... Maybe the climax of this round, and you trade a sell off that round tonight. But I'm looking for the 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 cat scalps and the yen scalps. The next thing to come, and possibly the um, the Swiss is going to crush down. So I'm long New Zealand, and I'm always going to go trolling on this one hour chart to try to make uh, 20 pips. Just keep pressing the one hour key and just write an order uh, trade script that says uh, maybe it goes down 50 pips deep, uh, 25, 15. But run them on every currency pair. Run them on all 
those pairs and every hour and some pairs you're going to think uh oh you know let me now the discretion comes in is to which has got the best setup for that kind of trade when the market is crashing you know this is the time to just think okay let me break out all the crap i wrote that fits this scenario so this is like if you're in hollywood and they're, they're going to do a comedy you need to write a comedy script you cannot write a drama script but that's like the um the movie the producers the script was inverted and people still love the movie for a different reason they thought it was funny these guys were serious i think and um so in trading that's a perfect scheme because uh all of these myths you hear if you if you trade that myth the right way it'll make money so all this stuff catch a falling knife don't stab it don't don't do this da, ba, ba. you know it's like uh the jackie mason guy you trader jackie mason was a trader you know he'd be you know like oh don't do that and you did this and blah, blah, blah. so you really have to think in terms of how many pips did you make you're done see you bye and do you have patience to wait for the thing to, to limits to fill and do you have patience to wait another two hours to get paid for the damn entry and that's uh that's it that's my story i'm sticking to the top it. of the hour got 10 minutes to go here i got out of this new zealand dollar because let's face it that was resistance now i'm looking to buy on a psycho plunge retest same thing on the CAD here now. I don't really like the CAD thing, but I like it for a scalp. I'm not bullish on this CAD. I'm totally um, long-term thinking the dollar is so baked. Of course, we think a lot of things uh, that are going to happen never happen. But look how baked this puppy is. I definitely want to get in here for the scalp tonight or whatever is left in this market for the rest of the week. I want to be able to see it on the one hour. I have no patience for the rest of these antics. Look how we tagged and bagged that 50. So that was the exit point just above the treetops here. People with cell limits just got filled up there for a scalp. So I got the euro on the left, the pound, the Australian, New Zealand, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, dollar yen. I took off the euro yen. These are the seven majors. These are the best spreads. The worst spread is going to be New Zealand. But it's a good limit order um, currency pair. You could have sold on a limit up here underneath this. You'd be up on the scalp right now. Here you would have sold at the, at the round. See how that was the exit? Like, this was your last chance to get the hell out of this scalp. Now, if you go to the five minute, look at that. Gee, wouldn't you know, came right back into this last known bottom. Bottom became a top. This was the sellers. They got stopped out if they had too tight a stop on that, but time wise, they nailed it. Sellers again. So we want to buy the possible plunge into here tonight uh, right now so on the these last 15 minutes now I'm going to put in some really aggressive buys right down here in case there's a smash and grab moment coming into the close of uh, the European session there and it looks like a retest or even goes deeper today so anything could happen. It looks like Swiss is ready to make a major rally. So I'm buying the uh, pullback in the euro right now with uh, just a pile of orders. Just looking for some real crazy stuff here. I don't know if there's any more news coming out, but I'm going to pre prepare for a psycho, psychotic um, uh, whipping action as you come into the close here. And even on the one hour, you can see that on a five minute chart or a one minute chart, this is quite the, um, there's probably a setup inside this black. 
if you were on the five minute chart there. And another way is even less look back is to trade it like this. Now a lot of people aren't they don't want to think about it like this because it's kind of it looks really steep and it looks like well yeah but all that really matters for most people during when the market's open is the last known um, bottom last known top and uh, we want to get in at the last known top so if you're hand placing your orders you're going to always be setting them for the retest entries and on the sell side same thing like maybe you're selling up into this so if in the one hour chart there i'm still looking back eight hours there's plenty of data plenty so i can go to the next broker that's set up with a little bit tighter view a broader view of like oh you know we could come all the way back down here so if we do i definitely want in now this one i got a little aggressive because i want to buy the retest of this new zealand because I think the uh, can Canadian is baked. It's had it. But, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Now, it's top of the hour is coming. Um, you know, this is uh, a big deal in these markets. You can see this peg that 100 there and just die out there. But it's somebody's, you know... <laughs> Placing a sell limit at the round handle sounds, I know it sounds really dumb with a 10 pip stop, but I can't think of a better strategy that's easier to follow. You would just, if you had a, your single drops, uh, you would just place a sell limit right there. And maybe you put a sell limit here at the 25, or you just have a grid that goes every 25 pips. And it's just going to stream above the market. Now, I could do that. I will get the other keyboard. So I have a sell keyboard and a buy keyboard. Because some of these are great sells. Because this currency pair happens to be very volatile. And there's not really an inversion for this other than the New Zealand. So if you're long New Zealand, maybe you're short CAD. But they have a different kind of spike behavior. And the hand place sells on New Zealand up here at this last known top. Um, like if you had your sell limit on this top. Yeah, they definitely crushed you, crushed back in. But you also had a sell limit on this top. So this this area up in here, this is so brutal of a controversy because a lot of people thought this 100 should hold like they got in at the 100 they took it to the to the 25 they're like oh we're gonna go to the we're gonna keep going up but not so fast so that the, we come back into this uh, bear trap what looks like a bear trap on this time frame this is where our little scalp um our little scalps are hiding in this uh this trap down here we also have a bunch of hiding down here. So when they come down and maybe take out the stop that's sitting in this this last wick here. So we're always looking to get in on these kind of, this style of trading here. These are always going to be um, big winners. If they ever fill, they're going to be high probability trades because what's the probability of um and the risk you the, the probability of winning is not probability of the market behaving so there's no correlation to probability in making money sorry there just there isn't if, if you have too big of a stock if you have don't have enough money in the account you may be right but you didn't have the ratios of risk so there's no i mean the only thing that the analysis is giving you is telling you okay put an order in here but you could get afraid and cancel it there's a lot of things that could go wrong and you're never going to make any money and uh so looks like the new zealand could take out the high of that thing now so i gotta think about well what's the next cheapest thing um so if this guy's going to go up one of these guys may have to give back and um the CAD still waiting to get filled on the uh, the kickback here. 
Swiss looks like it's going up, so the cat the, I'm gonna look to buy retests on the euro. If we come back to this 50 yard line for a 25 pip bounce, to me that's a high probability situation. As you get to the round handle, sellers come in. It doesn't mean that they come in forever. So if you're on the five minute, if you're a five minute trader, you realize you have to take the money and run. Like if you sold that 50 for a five, you 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 take the money and run. Now it looks like you just blow right through this top and go shearing right up to, not shearing, but maybe hit the drift all the way back to the 100. If you're trading at the market, you can see right here you'd have to be buying, right? If you're going to sit there with your finger on the trigger um, and you drew this trend line and you're like, you're like, well, that's the top became a bottom, boom. Right here is the top became a bottom. Boom, boom. You're, you know, literally, either you got a penning there, the scalp, designed to be a scalp like a big fat order or you're um, sitting there and babysitting the chart and going bam and you could come back to this trade on the if you go to the 15 minute well there's really no see only on the five is there a fractal for that entry of the uh, uh, like here's a low risk entry five minute breaks out where's the next place to get long this syncs up with the 15 minute pretty good so these 15 minute charts they're just a gold mine you know if you're trading that setup and even here this top you got a buy limit sitting at this top for at least the scalp to the 50 yard line and then re-enter another 50 yard line banger maybe you're selling here you know bears are getting in at this pivot right at the 50 looking for another 50. so 50 pips 25 pips should be your first target with a say it's a 12 pip stop you know, just write an order plan with a 20 pip stop and a 30 pip and a 40 pip winner. Double your money and whatever the other percentage is. And just all seven currency pairs, look for places to place your orders. Set, set them for the whole day, maybe, or for four hours. And walk away. See how it works. Look how retarded this trade is. You have an order sitting at the 50-yard line to make 20, 20, 10, 20 pips. You made money. You're done. Next trade, uh, you got pennings down here. Now, you can get carried away, right? You can always overtrade. Um, maybe you're short here. I think I'm flat waiting to get filled. So being flat waiting to get filled is another um, difficult task for the impatient uh, trader. So you can do all your analysis on here. You can run, you know, moving averages on this thing. And actually, when you're running them, when you're trading like this, I'm going to tell you, it just takes all the pressure off of looking back. I mean, to look at a weekly chart, I guess I could, at the end of the week, you know, I don't know. Does it really matter? If you're a, a scalper, a day trader do you care I, now people will say well yeah you but yeah but if your stops are 20 pips you should be out right it's not like you you know if the market goes psychoville one of these currency pairs isn't really in psychoville it's setting up for a rally so dollar yen right now is like calming down and it looks like you know what a lot of people are thinking oh you know maybe this thing's gonna go up I'm thinking they're gonna clean house one last time they're gonna come down here and retest maybe here tonight so strategy tonight is dollar yen getting in down here in this trap this big um, big uh, trap the bears and then we retrace back up into here or you're getting long here thinking well you know look at this trend line on this bizarre little zigzag sawtooth stairway and look at this uh, bigger trend line but hey maybe this is the channel 
that we're going down, right? Maybe we have to walk all the way back to this wick. Now look at that entry. Look at these, look at this nasty retest. But look how it coincides with the smack to the 100, an attempt at a 100. Bam. Now it looks like maybe this has got a, this is going to go up. But who's got the best setup out of all these trades? I think anything that's a bounce I'm into. <laughs> I think it looks like a good bounce. So here, here looks like a good uh, plunge. If I can get in about right here on these guys. So this is a retest and beyond. So if we take out my retest strategy, I'm going to get in... Um, you can never go you can never lose any money trading super deep ridiculous orders because they probably won't fill but wouldn't it be great if this market could plunge down here I also don't want to stack up too many orders at the same price level okay it looks like euro could do a mini pullback here so i got one buy limit here and i'm going to come in with a Retest scalp British pound looking for that um, space your orders super wide always go in with the worst scenario for the uh, if you're buying limits you're looking for you're really thinking like a, a bear, a, a winning bear trader. And you're thinking, boy, oh boy. And they're also thinking, well, gee, I should have thought that trade up better. So can, Canadian could pull back into this, into this thing here for the scalp. And um, maybe it only pulls back uh, here. Maybe we are going to keep marching north. Uh, there is, you know, the four hour view. And you could be trading this uh, four-hour chart also. So from the standpoint, last night's breakout, they would have trapped you on this breakout. This was a quiet doji. But see how they see how they butchered your uh, four-hour robot got butchered there. So never good to trade stop entry in a four-hour chart. Unless you've got a lot of money. I mean, here, yeah, you made money, but look at this wicked retest on the four hour. So, this is always going to be a good entry. Smash and grab retest there. So, you see this over and over again. It's also the entry here. And, um, you yeah, know, it's just stupid. But you can totally plan for these reoccurring situations. I'm not going to chase this damn uh, dollar yen. It does look like a buy, but I'm going to get the. Uh, I'll buy the. Um, whenever when and then when everybody's like, wait a minute. So I want that trade. I want the uh, huh. So here I'm getting in on that pullback of the euro right now. If we come back about 50 pips, I really want to get in about right here, right at this, right around that uh, last known bottom. And here too, Australia pulls back into this last known uh, zone here. Okay, now that was, the sellers did come in on this uh, New Zealand, but I'm going to get in with buys because I think that um, the US dollar is cooked baked put a fork in it and um, this could be that wonderful scalp retest setting up here right now and that would if this comes zooming down in they fill these then we go up then canadian comes ripping back into the same thing with the yen 
So I'm thinking very deep and looks like uh, Dollar Swiss is about to break out here. We take out these uh, people are getting in with their trend bots here along the dollar right now. Should pull that should make the uh, euro pairs the anti dollar pairs should pull back here and fill my um, my aggressive long uh, scenario here. So here comes New Zealand. I'm just gonna let those orders fill if they do. If not, if we come plunging back to here. Let these scalps play out. I have no buy stops running. I guess I could put a buy stop here. But I'm not really a trend trader. Not only do I not like to sell, I don't think I'm a trend trader either. But So I'm not in denial about that anymore. And uh, that helps. Um, New Zealand, definitely looking for that crazy retest right now. Same thing with Australia. So these guys got news coming up. The sellers definitely came in here. That's a no-brainer. For the scalp, I got the hell out of my stuff that I bought here. So one man's entry is another man's exit. Here I want to get in. I want to get in here. I want to get in definitely on this top. I want to get in um, if this thing just goes nutsoid. Here I want to get in at this last known. Plus this whole thing here. And maybe it's going to be a rangy... Uh, crazy thing. Here's my entry here. This, but I'm gonna get in on the way there in case we never make it there because it's so excited about going up. And this was my early, earlier scalp was to buy the psycho plunge to the round and get out. Here was the 50 yard line exit. We still may have to take this up to this before. And this was the CAD that you always want to have a sell limit sitting there. A sell limit here, and always a buy limit. Every 50 pips, like when the news comes out, you may have a script that when you drop it every 50 pips, you're getting in. F with a 20 pip stop, 10 pip stop. Maybe there's, every, on the 75 pit deeps, you've got a cluster of three. One's a scalp, one's a, one's a intermediate, one's a swing trade. And they're sitting down on these 50 grids. All right, and just plucking them off. You just, it doesn't matter. You could have cells running too, but that gets a little more complicated, I think, uh, psychologically. It seems easier that you're less likely to overtrade. If you're only looking for the best buy out of seven, you only get one signal here. Here's kind of a signal. What do you call it? A, uh, a zone to get in. And here would have been your trend trade. And here's another buy stop strategy. You get filled, picked up in the. You may want to go to the half. This is the four hour. You may want to go to the half hour for that technique. So we never got the pullback here, and uh, people are chasing it, so it looks more likely we'll get filled on these retests of the dollar. And it looks like they're off to the races. The dollar's going to get smacked again. Look at this pound. Let's take a look at that pound coming up into the seller's floor right at the... Uh, 100 pip uh, handle right now. The even big round, big round numbers. Okay, looking for the pullback here. So always waiting. But anyways, that was my. Uh, that's my strategy. That's my system.